So, hi guys. Um, today we're going to talk about the laxometer and the sonometer. These are these are part of the workshop on seasons. Uh, I'm sure you must have read the notes on seasons, or you must have studied seasons at school, and all. So we won't go much about that. But I mean, I want to just clear some misconceptions. And there's a video that we usually show that uh, in the video, students from Harvard University are being interviewed on what causes seasons. So many people don't understand the reasons for seasons. People are confused about seasons. I mean, the most, the, the most common misconception is the one that the reason why we have seasons is because we know that the earth revolves around the sun. It revolves around the sun, the earth. Okay, there's our earth ball. And now people believe that the, the reason why we have seasons is because sometimes the earth is close to the sun. Okay? And when, they, when the earth is close to the sun, you have summer. And when the earth is away from the sun, you have winter. Okay? That's what people believe. But that fails to explain the fact that sometimes when we have um, when we have uh, winter in the northern hemisphere, then we have summer in the southern hemisphere. Because if it was the distance, then you're supposed to have the same seasons both on the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Okay? So this instrument is going to explain that. This instrument is going to explain that this one is called the laxometer. And then the next one, this one explains, because this is like characterized by two things. One is the variation or the difference in temperature. In summer, you have hot days or warm days. In winter, you have cold days. So the difference in temperature of the first day. So this explains the difference in temperature. It's called the laxometer. This one we call the sonometer is going to explain the difference in the length of the day. Because in summer, Days are longer, and then in winter, days are shorter and nights are longer. All right? Okay, we can start with the laxometer. There's our laxometer. We're going to get this board. You have to take everything out there. Just take everything out there. Okay? Once you have taken everything out, this is what you're going to be left with. You can just push those to make holes there. You push the other one to make a hole there and then you can just fold where you see the lines where, wherever there are lines you just fold it you just fold it wherever there are lines just fold it and you fold inwardly inwardly you fold inwardly you just fold wherever there are lines because there are lines there there are lines there there's lines there so wherever there are lines you just fold you just fold then you're gonna have something like this. You're gonna have something like this. But now if you look there, you will see there's portions that retain glue. 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 That is where we're going to put our glue. That is where we're gonna put our glue. So you take your glue. Take your glue and then we can put the glue there. Where it says glue, you just put the glue. No, just put the glue. Just put the glue. Okay? And this is what is going to happen. You put the glue and then you can just clip it there. Even the other side. Put the glue and just hold it so that it goes. Even the other side where it is. So you're gonna, you're gonna end up with something like this. You're gonna end up with something like this. Okay? Now, if you hold it like that, okay, if you look inside, you see there's a box there with a lot of squares. Even on the other side, there's a box with a lot of squares. Okay? Now, if we lift this one up, on the one side, we see the angles there, run from zero degrees 
up to 90 degrees. Now if we lift this one up and put it at 90 degrees, it's going to run parallel with the shorter one. Now, the question is, when we look through here, when you look through those openings, how many complete boxes can you see when you look through them? Okay, when you look on the, on the left hand side, you will see that shaded box consisting of four squares. And when you look on the other side at 90 degrees, say, you will see a box consisting of four squares. Okay? But now if we change the angle, we decrease the angle from 90 towards zero. Okay, as we change the angle, and when you look through, you will see that suddenly the number of boxes increases as the angle decreases. As the angle decreases from 90 to zero, the number of boxes increases that you can see through. Okay? You can ask the students to draw a graph of the angle versus the number of boxes and explore the mathematic, mathematical relationship between the angle and the number of, of boxes because you will see that it's, got a, it's an inverse proportionality. So the curve that you are likely to get is a hyperbola. So you get a curve like that. Alright? <coughs> now if we shine the light through the box, okay? if we shine it at, that, like at 90 degrees like that, to the box, all the light will be concentrated in that region. All the light will be concentrated in that region, shaded region, and therefore it will become hotter there. But if the same amount of light is shining at an angle, it's not going to be confined to those four boxes. The same amount of light that shines through there is going to be distributed over a large surface. And what happens with the temperature? The temperature becomes cooler and more close to colder. Because now it's not concentrated in one area, but the, 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 the heat is distributed over a large surface. So this helps to explain the difference in temperature during the seasons. Okay? Because you can have light, you can have light shining at 90 degrees. When light shines directly at 90 degrees, it's going to be concentrated in one area. You can have two torches, in fact. Two small torches. One torch shining at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Then the light will be concentrated there. All the light. But as soon as you change the angle, the light is distributed over a long and a larger surface area. As such, the temperature becomes cooler than in the first one. There's your laxometer. So it helps explain the difference in temperature during the seasons. Because our summer, our summer tends to be, our summer tends to be warmer and hotter. And winter tends to be colder. And the reason why this happens is not because the earth is away from the sun or is close to the sun. It's because the earth is tilted at 23 and a half degrees. That's why we have the difference in the, in the seasons. Because when the sun is shining and the earth is tilted, the, 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 where it shines directly, right, you're going to have summer. And where the light is distributed, oh, by large surface, the an angle, when it shines an angle, you're going to have winter because the temperature is going to be cooler and colder. So that's why we have seasons. And I mean, sometimes in the northern hemisphere, you will have, when we have summer in the northern hemisphere, in the southern hemisphere, we have winter and vice versa. I think that explains In fact, we've got a nice experiment that we do where we can have two boxes outside with thermometers and have two bulbs, one shining directly and one shining at an angle. And then we can measure the, the, the temperatures between the thermometers at the beginning and then later on again you will see the difference in temperature. That's the first thing. And then let's go to the thermometer. I don't want to say a lot of things because this is not a workshop, it's just a demonstration of, of how to do this thing. Okay? There's your sonometer. Just take all the different pieces out. This explains the difference in 
in the land of day during the seasons. Take the other one. Take the other one. So you have one, two, three, four pieces. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we're going to start with these two. The one that turned A and B. This is going to be your, your base. So what we do, we just put glue on the inner part of that. If you know the other one, on the other side, we just put glue there. Just hold those two and stick them together. Stick them together. And you can just hold those to be like a mushroom. And then you can take that one, you take with our logo, the SAAO logo. You can take those with the SAAO logo. And then you must look at the directions. Okay, you will see the cardinal points there. North, south, north, south, east, and west. Also, this one has got east and west. The east must correspond to the east, and the west must correspond to the west. So there's the east there. The east must correspond to the east, and the west must correspond to the west. Okay. So what we do, we just put the glue there. And the east must correspond to the east, and the west must correspond to the, to the west. There you are. East and the east. And the west must correspond to the, to the west. So we're finished with the first part. Now we go to the second part. You just leave that on the table. There's the second part. Just cut that, the inner part out. And once you've cut the inner part out, then you can just, where it says fold, just fold. Just fold. Just fold. When it says fold, you just fold. Okay? So you have something like that. Okay? Now, this is where the power of this instrument lies. Because we can look at the length of the at different latitudes. We can look at, at the southern hemisphere, at the equator, on the north pole, and we can also look at any place at where you are to check the variation in the length of day. Okay. Now you have your south and you have your north, you have your latitude, so you need to locate it at, at whatever latitude that you want. You can choose the equator and check the length of day there, or you can choose whatever. Okay, I'll just put it at the equator. This is a nice experiment for the learners because they can check the length of day at various at various positions. So there's the arrows pointing where you want to put you place yourself. You can just put it there and put it at zero degree. I'll just put it at zero degree. Okay? There it is. It's 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 at, it's at, the, at the equator. Now, there's, if you read it there, it says you, that's where you are standing at the equator. There's your sky. There's your sky. And then you will see that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Rises in the east and sets in the west. So what you need to do is to look at the length of the arc. And check if it, like, I mean, we can put, the, we can put ourselves and check what happens during, in June. Okay. and check the length of the arc during June or you can put yourself in December and check because where the sun is in the sky and check what happens when the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so you just measure the length of the arc okay, if we look at ourselves here um, topic of Capricorn and we are about 32 degrees okay, let's just put 32 32 degrees okay 
Now you see if you put your, there's the sun, check, rise in the east and sets in the west. That's the length of the arc. Okay? Now, at the same position, we look at the length of the arc from there, from when the sun rises in December, east to the west. You can see we have longer days. The arc is bigger in, in summer, December, than in, in winter, in the shorter arc. So they can experiment at different angles to check the effect uh, of the position, you know, in relation to the length of the, you know, so that's what is nice about this centimeter. It just helps you to check, to understand the, the variation, the length of the, and what's more nice is you can vary the angle. So there you are, you have the two instruments. This one is the laxometer, it will explain the variation in temperature during winter and summer. This one is your sonometer. It explains um, the variation in the length of day. Variation in the length of day, variation in temperature, laxometer, sonometer. I hope you will use these instruments in your workshop to, 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 to understand the reasons for seasons. Because really, this confuses even learned people. Thank you.